Hey guys, it's Josh with Cardin Off Road, and today we're going to be installing Radflow coilovers. Now I chose Radflow because they had a lot of good reviews, and the customer service seemed to be good, and that's important to me. Um, and I also like the look of them, they're a black spring, you know, and I didn't want nothing with crazy colors. So I chose 14 inch travels, and I also got the reservoir with them. Now 14s will sit pretty good, I think, with this shoot because it's sitting pretty low and I'm only planning on having about four inches up travel. So hopefully that'll work out good. Now when you're installing coilovers, you need to make sure that you figure out, unless you're gonna fully collapse them, you need to figure out what they are fully collapsed. Now these come in uh, right about 21 and a half, and the reason that's important is because you need to make sure your bracket on your axle to your frame um, is correct, depending on your full bump. So it sounds confusing, but the simplest way is Make sure, obviously you should be, you know, if you're building a sheep at full bump or building your vehicle at full bump, go ahead and mount your axle bracket. I think that's the easiest because they're only going to go in so many places. Mount that, do some measurements, um, whether you're going with a tower or a hoop, and make sure that it's set right. Now I'd say tack this stuff into place, make sure you have enough metal to work with if you have to go up or down. That way if you have to move this stuff, you can. As far as angles, I wouldn't get too, you know, in depth in that the biggest thing is make sure that they're the same on both sides now they're going to tell you that you know five degrees or 15 degrees no more than that um, as far as tapered in and also front or back there's people running these things at a lot um, bigger degrees than that the biggest thing is it's going to change your spring rate and it could change the travel that you're actually getting out of that depending on which direction you're going with it um, now keep in mind you're only going to be able to mount these in certain spots so that's going to kind of keep you from mounting them the wrong way. Um, like I said the biggest thing is mounting them correctly on both sides and make sure they're the same and also measuring making sure you're doing your tuck and your full bump and make sure they're not hitting anything. So we're going to go and get started. Before I do make sure you subscribe to this channel, watch the other videos and make sure you hit the thumbs up. So one little tip, if you're using like a pipe bender, or a cheaper tube bender like I am that doesn't have like the degree marks on it, after you get the first one done and you're happy with it, trace it out on something um, like a piece of cardboard or on the floor. That way as you're bending the other one, you can stop, you can set it down and then you'll be able to tell how much further you got to go. Um, just makes it a little easier to do it the second time. All right, so I want to kind of trace out um, as far as where I cut on the other side, I'm going to cut this out and then we will go ahead and set up the hoop to come up to where the coilover is going to be. So this is actually just a Harbor Freight pipe bender, uh, but I've been tubing with it all the time. It works great. Um, obviously, it'd be nice to have a really expensive tube bender, but if you can't afford that, um, this is a great way to go. So it, depending on the wall thickness, sometimes it wants to kink. One way to prevent that is to uh, fill it with wet sand. So plug one in, slowly fill it with sand, slowly fill it with water, and just keep going back and forth. Uh, tap on the ground so it's compact and what that'll do is prevent it from the wall from wanting to push in So it's just a good tip and you might not have to do that all the time It depends on the wall thickness and it also depends on how sharp of a bend you're trying to do uh, Another good tip is Always cut your tubing longer than what you need so you don't want to try to cut this to the exact size that you're trying to install You want to cut it three or four inches longer on both ends. And what that's gonna do is give you plenty of room if you have to move it around. Um, now it's a little easier since I've already got the first piece done. You know, you can kind of better judge that way, but you don't wanna do it short and then you have to get a whole new piece. So leave a little bit extra room just in case you need to cut some off or mess up. Also when you're bending tubing, you always wanna bend past what you really need. So when you're getting close, and you're looking at this and you think that looks right, you want to keep going just a couple more times because once you let off, that tube is going to kind of flex back. So here's my first piece that I cut. Now this is after it was completely done, uh, the angles and everything that I needed. So I'm just going to go and check and see where I'm at. And like I said, we're not worried about these ends. 
or just worried about this bend. So about right there where it needs to be, so it looks like I just need to go a little bit further. Alright, so we're going to go with that. Now I'm going to go ahead and where I got these lines, I'm going to go ahead and cut those angles. So if you don't have one of these, uh, they're magnetic. Um, if you're doing this sort of thing, if you're doing a one-ton swap, then you should already have one. Um, if not, you're really hurting yourself because it makes things a lot easier. I might have to cut the body a little bit more. We'll figure that out. Everything's just going to fall out, I guess. We'll figure that out once we get the bottom in place. All right, so the bottom's mounted up. Went ahead and put my tabs on top coilover. Now these aren't welded in place, this coilover is just sitting here, but I'm pretty certain that it's in the right spot. Um, you want to keep your jack down underneath your axle. Makes it really nice so you can adjust that up and down. Um, now what I did is I measured off this coilover from the top of this tubing down, because I know these tubings are in the same spot, because I already measured that. Um, but it doesn't hurt to measure from you know different spots, you know your frame, your body, just kind of see where everything's at, um, give you an idea of how close you are. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and tack these into place, and then we'll see how everything looks. So I got the fuel cell in there. The next thing I want to do is take a bar from here to here and that's going to do a couple different things for me. It's going to make this a lot stronger um, so these can't flex in and out. And also it's going to give me a point to mount my reservoirs. Um, I was actually going to mount them out here I was thinking but I kind of like this right here. Um, I'll have to switch the coilovers around so the name's not upside down. But kind of give you an idea of what it's going to look like. So it's going to be out of the way and I kind of like that look as well. And then the other one will obviously if I can get that to work. We'll come up here. So I got the tubing cut. So now what I want to do is notch that out to where it kind of lays in there. And what that's going to do, what that'll do is it'll help me cap this end off and then I'll be able to fully weld all the way around it. Okay, so you can see the joints I did. Now once this is welded, uh, this will be completely enclosed so there'll be no openings whatsoever. Now the next thing I want to do is do some kind of mount for my reservoirs. And what I came up with is I took a piece of tubing, um, cut it to the size that I wanted, and then I split it in half. Now this wasn't big enough so I put it on the ground just smashed with the hammer to kind of open it up. And what my plan is, is to put one here and one here, and that'll hold my reservoir. Now, I'm not going to weld on the back side. I think what I'm going to do is just do some plug welds, uh, maybe three plug welds inside there, and then do the same down here, and then maybe do some zip ties just to hold them in there.
So I wasn't going to mess around with spring rates this video, but I figured I'd go ahead um, just do a quick thing on it. And the reason why is because <clears throat> it really depends on your ride height and stuff like that uh, of what spring rates you want to go with. But in this case, we got two 250 springs. This is a 14 inch, this is a 16 inch. And you always want your shorter one up top and usually you want your lighter one up top. In this case, they weigh the same, so it doesn't really matter. We'll just put the longer one on the bottom. And what this is going to do, I believe this is too heavy. I think I need a 200 for the top. But what we'll do is we'll stick them on there, put the weight of the Jeep on there, and then we'll decide by measuring the lower spring. So this is like 16 and a quarter. We'll see how many inches this um, compresses. That'll give us the weight of the Jeep on that corner. And then if a ride height is not where we want it, we'll call RadFlow, we'll give them the numbers. Um, whether we want a ride height to be higher, which we're not gonna be. Um, thinking it's gonna be too high, so we're gonna go drop it down. And they'll be able to tell by how many inches this compresses which will give them the weight of that corner. And then in turn, it'll tell them what spring rates you need to go with. So, but for this purpose, we're gonna throw them on there just to get an idea of where we're at. So I got the nuts at the very top all the way up. Slid the first spring on. Now, in this case, it's right at the end. Um, I got the nuts out at the top all the way up. There it is. So it might be a little harder. Um, some of these stops are a little thicker than others. Um, just kind of depends on the setup. So this one here is a little tight. It's not too horrible. I think I got to compress this about a half inch. Now these spring rates ain't horrible, so you can compress them fairly decent. Now this snap ring is very simple. There's actually a um, groove in here, it slides into. Very simple, you don't need any tools or anything like that. It's really easy to put on. Now get it to there. Let's see if I can do this without pushing the coil over up in the air. Just like so. Okay, so the coil is installed. Now it's obviously pretty simple fit in there really good. I might have to do a little more trimming in there and one thing I noticed is it's pretty close between the coilover and the frame. I'm gonna you know have to cycle it once I get everything done, see where it's at. The worst case is I'll just have to notch the frame a little bit. Not a big deal. That's pretty simple. So we're sitting at about six and a half inches I believe from the fender to the tire. Now I really only need about five because um, I'm only planning on doing about four inches up travel. And also one thing you'll want to do is measure your shock um, the shaft. Now, it's also about six inches. So I really only need four inches up travel. So what that tells me is I really need to bring this down about an inch and a half or so. Um, not quite two inches, I don't think. But that'll give my ride height a little bit better. Now, one thing to keep in mind, like I was saying a little bit ago, you're going to want to measure your lower spring. Now this spring was 16 inches. I just measured it, it's dead on 13 inches. And if I'm correct, it takes, these are 200 pound springs, so it takes 200 pounds to compress the spring one inch. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm mistaken on that, but I think that's correct. So there you have it. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, you know, there's different ways of mounting the coilovers. Like I said, don't get too, crazy on you know which direction and stuff like that it just might change your spring rate so if i would have mounted those coilovers up here obviously the spring weight probably would have been a lot heavier or it might have been good with what i got so you know just watch your degrees make sure they're the same on both sides and you'll be fine hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe hit the thumbs up